any second now. Hi. Um, I'm going to use uh, some examples now to try and explain the differences between uh, complementary events, mutually exclusive events, and independent events. Okay, I'm going to use uh, rugby examples. Uh, if you're as interested in rugby as I am, don't worry, at least the maths will be interesting. So here we go. Complementary events. Okay, this is where one event or the other event has to happen. One of them has to happen. You've got a matching pair, one of them has to happen, and both can't happen at the same time. Okay, so quite simply, there is only one thing that we can pair with the All Blacks, they're a New Zealand rugby team you might have heard of, winning the Rugby World Cup in, I think it's 2015, and there's only one event that we could match that can't happen at the same time, but one of them has to happen. And of course the matching event there, you're shouting it at me right now, but I'm on a video so I can't hear you, the matching event here is that they don't win, that the All Blacks don't win the Rugby World Cup in 2015. Okay, so that is the complementary event. Now, if we were using a letter, okay, to stand for this event happening, you can't see that, but I've written A equals there, okay, then this one, we have a special notation, we call this A dash, and we know that that means not A. A is not happening. So when we've got those two probabilities, then they will add up to, that's right, one. Okay, mutually exclusive events. These are a little bit like complementary events, in fact, um, Complementary events are a type of mutually exclusive event. Now, here, you cannot have both events happening, but it doesn't necessarily mean one of them is going to happen. So here we've got the All Blacks uh, win the Rugby World Cup. Now, another event that can't happen at the same time, uh, how about we go for, God forbid, England wins the Rugby World Cup. That would be a terrible event, but it would also be mutually exclusive with the All Blacks winning the Rugby World Cup, which would be lovely and we're all excited, right? So, um, basically, you cannot have both, but there are other options, okay? Tanzania could win, or um, the, the West Island, Australia could win, or Scotland, or Tonga, or Niue, or somewhere, right? So mutually exclusive, can't both happen, something else could be happening. Complementary, one or the other. Effectively, complementary events are basically this happening and it not happening. Okay? Excellent. Independent event, right? This is where one event has no influence on the other happening or not. Okay? So... It doesn't matter what happens here, this one could happen, it could not happen. In fact, it doesn't make it more or less likely. Okay, so some American team, um, I think the Lakers play basketball. Okay, the Lakers win whatever a basketball competition is. I don't know, something they play over in the States, right? There shouldn't be any effect here. Okay, whether the All Blacks win or lose, no chance, okay? Definitely nothing happening there, you'd think. Okay? Now, here I've put another option, which is could be, it could be an influence, okay? Now, I had to think hard here. There is one here. What, if, what about, um, what's that um, netball team called? Uh, Silver Ferns, right. The Silver Ferns. Uh, winning uh, the Netball World Cup. Okay, so uh, there, there could be an influence or there could not be. And so what we would have to do is we would have to do a test. Okay, and it actually turns out to be the same formula that we use up here B 
because these two are independent, is the same one that we use here. And this formula is P A intersection B equals the probability of A times the probability of B. So the intersection, remember, means that both are happening. This happens and that happens. You can think of those little and maybe, an A for and, but of course that's not the and. Right, anyway, um, now you can use that formula to work out questions knowing that uh, these two events are independent, or you can use it and see if these two are independent. So what you would do is you would get these three values, you would plug them into the formula, and if that is uh, in fact equal, then these two are independent, just as these two are independent. Okay? Uh, I want to go into this in more depth in a later video, but this should give you a good start. Okay, I hope you enjoyed watching as much as I've enjoyed making this video. Thank you.